Oh, good morning. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Tuesday's trading session, the 2nd of May 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal markets, uh, uh, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now in terms of the markets, where we stand and where we're going, uh, good question. And let's try and decipher this and let's try and get to the crux of the matter. As always, uh, Asian markets overnight, you have the Shanghai negative on the back of weaker economic data from China. That's multiple days now on the weekend. We had a weaker economic data and today weaker economic data again. Certainly is signaling a risk aversion or weakness in global growth. Uh, we have the Nikkei up 135 points, uh, also certainly bullish on the back of USDJPY move. If I break up the chart of the USDJPY here, folks, okay, so an impressive thrust thus far. A uh, daily chart now is coming into potential resistance. Yeah, taking our previous support equals resistance. We do have horizontal um, resistance here, folks. Okay, so again, looking for risk aversion, given the fact that we've moved from 108 all the way up to 112 now uh, on the back of weak economic US data. Okay, so whether or not individuals believe that the Fed is obviously going to go ahead and taper, maybe that's the um, that's the narrative at present. We just have to react. For now, USDJPY is certainly into, into a solid resistance zone. In terms of the Nikkei, let's just bring up the Nikkei daily. Nikkei daily closing the gap above as well at 19.445. So again, looking for risk aversion. We have another gap at 19.530, but that certainly will be capped and, and that certainly will uh, restrict the market. Now, if I take the pivot high, take it to that pivot low, you've retraced more than 75%, which has been very, very impressive. Okay, so you have hats off to the, the Nasdaq, or should we say Nikkei, should we say, and the Nasdaq as well. In terms of the Shanghai daily, we're still lagging, okay, we're still uh, basically um, hovering around those lows, and that certainly isn't a bullish sign, okay. Uh, European and US equities certainly diverging from Chinese equities. In terms of economic data this morning, let's just uh, recap here. You have um, uh, obviously Chinese data, which I've covered. You got China, Spanish data came in more or less in line, slightly beating. Uh, Italian certainly beating slightly. Uh, French data in line, bang in line. German data bang in line, which is a coincidence. Okay, Italian uh, unemployment certainly rising, and the latest story at present, obviously, is uh, with regards to uh, Alitalia bankruptcy, and that certainly is risk negative. The European unemployment rate certainly increasing, so again, risk negative. European PMI is certainly coming in slightly weaker, so therefore, risk negative. We're looking forward to Red Book Index now, uh, global dairy auction as well for the Kiwi. Uh, API data obviously will be a market mover as always, and then we have Kiwi data in the evening. So. Really nothing much from the US front, okay, other than the fact that we're focusing on the uh, the Fed and obviously what they're going to do going forward, okay. In terms of the uh, technicals, let's just quickly go over the technicals now for you. As always, weekly chart certainly remains into resistance and therefore looking at risk aversion, especially given the fact that Mr. Draghi now is stuck uh, in terms of inflation ticking higher as well. I think today's economic data as well has signified further inflation increase and therefore obviously forcing the Draghi's hand or forcing Draghi's hand to certainly be more hawkish and therefore risk negative. The German DAG certainly has failed to make any higher highs, uh, holding that uh, key resistance line uh, based on that notion that the euro certainly is above 1.09 and therefore obviously in triggering inflation and therefore obviously a hawkish stance by Draghi and therefore risk negative. German DAX itself on the 10 minute chart certainly has its bear flag formation, which I'm expecting to play out and obviously look to uh, potentially move south. So certainly bias on the German DAX. In terms of the French CAC, we already know with regards to the political uncertainty and so on and so forth. We have an unfilled gap below at uh, 5260, so 67, sorry, certainly looking to close that 5260 support. Therefore, looking at risk aversion here. 60 minute chart, again, no higher highs, uh, capped here at the key resistance at 5300. Again, you have that unfilled gap below that certainly needs to close. Daily chart at the moment, multiple doji candles, okay, massive gap on left and behind, and therefore looking at risk aversion. Weekly chart, clearly a risk aversion, clearly a market topping out here, okay, uh, at present. Okay, so French CAC at present is at double top resistance and therefore looking for risk aversion, okay, same concept with regards to the German DAX. FTSE 100 at present really is in no man's land. If I just move on to the weekly, first of all, it's inside bar, therefore bearish, remains bearish. Daily chart at present really it's uh, a potential topping tail now, uh, looking uh, for weakness. Even though we had stronger UK data, it certainly has sent sterling higher and therefore obviously sending FTSE 100 lower. Now there is a bull flag certainly forming here, so just keep an eye on the uh, FTSE in terms of the next potential move. Could certainly be higher if uh, we uh, can, we actually get uh, number one. Uh, so oil strength and number two, we actually get um, 
sterling weakness. So that certainly is a catalyst that's moving the FTSE 100 at present. In terms of the 10-minute chart, let's just quickly go back to the 10-minute chart. Really, it's uh, uh, we put in a high there at 27.53, sorry, 50, sorry, 72.53, and then obviously now we're looking to potentially move lower in terms of the 10-minute chart. You have support uh, in this zone here where previous resistance equals support, so it should be interesting to see how the FTSE reacts in this zone here, which is down at 72.30, and then obviously 72.25. So keep an eye on that, okay, in terms of the FTSE itself, okay. Uh, FTSE certainly has gap fill uh, below as well, the market gaps higher, you're looking at 7205 gap fill below. So FTSE is certainly vulnerable, especially with regards to sterling, if you bring up this chart of sterling. And also the euro is starting to push, push higher as well with stronger EU data, uh, signaling inflation, and therefore obviously is bearish due to the uh, export side of the equation certainly being hurt. Okay, Same concept here with the euro and same concept here with GBP USD. So keep an eye on that Okay, going forward. Okay, now in terms of the um, euro stocks, last but not least, daily chart at the moment, really no man's land, the daily chart is trading sideways, really weekly chart at the moment, the next real resistance is seen at 3695. So we'll see how the market reacts uh, following the, but the euro stocks, uh, S&P 350 and the um, stock 600 both are certainly into resistance and certainly remain weak. Again, euro, euro stocks, like I said, just trading sideways, okay, no real uh, intended direction. Uh, at present, yeah, 10 minute chart again, just really trading sideways. You have gap fill above at 3578. We'll see exactly how the market responds there, and obviously, the big massive gap below at 3440. Okay, so I think that's a wrap, folks. Okay, please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers, and uh, also uh, visit cfds.com for your trading needs. Goodbye.